Welcome to this submission video for Winback Covert Operations. I'm Joseph Joestar316, and I will be running uh, the full game on easy difficulty. Uh, the category is any percent, and I am running the Nintendo Switch Online version of Winback Covert Ops. Uh, the time will start once I uh, click story, and the time will end on the last hit versus Cecil, who is the last boss of the game. And the running estimate will be one hour. So I'll try to explain as uh, things are happening, since it will be pretty quick in the first uh, few minutes, but I'll do my best. So here we go. So in five, four, three, two, one. This way! All right, so Winback was originally released on the Nintendo uh, on the Nintendo 64. Almost said the Switch again. Um, it was released on the Nintendo 64 in 1999. It was remade for the PS2 about a year or two later, and in October of 2021, when Nintendo Switch Online was launched, that's when Winback was added once again and the first skip I'm doing now is this out of bounds glitch where I'm crossing from stage one now into Sarkozy? stage two as in from Sarkozia yes that very same reference um actually I thought I muted it but that's okay so partially stages one and two were loaded at the very beginning of the game I'm now actually going into stage three uh, because what well, for again for whatever reason like parts of the stage still function even though on the score screen it's still technically stage one right now all right so this next skip I'm gonna be doing is a part of a setup first I'm gonna be aiming at this sensor behind this uh, container here which is gonna trigger this guard I'm gonna shoot him in the back because uh, I'm going to need that guard to be here in order to do this next skip, hopefully, with some uh, success. So I'm going to try to stand in this corner in between this cover and this uh, Humvee. And there we go. So this guard shot me out of bounds along this uh, inner perimeter here. And I'm just going to follow the edges of it very carefully which now takes me right to the end stage of what is stage three or stage one. Like I said, the game doesn't know any better. So now we're on stage four and the first boss fight of the run, which is Leela. Casually, this is probably one of the hardest bosses to get used to early on in the, you know, in learning the game. But thankfully we can just stay in cover for most of it. Trade shots with her. Just like that, that is the first boss fight. All right, so like I said, that was the, uh, what was technically considered the outer ground section of Wenback. It's broken up into four different sections. There's outer ground, office, which is what we're in now, then it's factory, and then the control center, which, to make a long story shorter, the emphasis of Wenback is about this terrorist takeover of this uh, control facility, which houses the Gulf Satellite Super Weapon, um, which is a you know weapon of mass destruction, and you know has a three-hour cooldown in between each shot. And we are tasked with going into that control center to, you know, stop the bad guys and, you know, save the day. But things don't go according to plan when our uh, main character, Jean-Luc, here was dispatched along with the rest of his team members from Team Scat. Where there is a chopper uh, malfunction on the way over where they all had to jump out. And so along the way, Jean-Luc rendezvous with some of his teammates. Some of the ones, uh, well, I guess I'll cover that later because, you know, spoilers. Uh, but for right now, we're just traversing, you know, one stage at a time while skipping a handful of others in certain places. And so the weaponry that I haven't talked about.
talked about yet is I'm going to be using the uh, handgun for a good majority of the run. It's a uh, infinite ammo weapon. It holds 15 rounds. It does really sufficient damage and has some good low to mid-range lock-on capability. The other weapons, which I'll be using intermittently, uh, which you've seen some of the guards use them against me already, one is this uh, shotgun. It's good for close range and has a somewhat of a widespread, um, but it, you know, gets the job done. And then the other weapon is the uh, submachine gun. It's got the most rounds, longest lock-on range, but the, also the lowest damage. Uh, so for boss fights, it's primarily with the handgun for, uh, like I said, it's got good lock-on range and you never need to collect ammo um, for this weapon at all. Whereas the other two, I will be collecting them um, in places that are part of the route, which also includes picking up this C4 explosive. Um, that's going to be used for skips throughout the game, uh, along with another weapon, which I'll be getting later. Alright, so I'm just going to be using the SMG to, you know, clear these boxes. And as you can see with the guards, there's only certain ones I have to neutralize. Um, a lot of the other ones can be skipped. You know, whether if it's just running, you know, past them, or in this case, I'm trying to run away from one and avoid getting, you know, shot at and, you know, knifed by the other. So throughout the game, there's these like scripted events like you see here where it shows this uh, defensive fortification. But instead of trying to, you know, go in behind cover and deal with the guy in the turret, we're just going to run through it. All right. Now, because I took a little bit more damage than I would have liked, I'm going to play this next area a little bit safer. just gonna take these guards out uh, because one thing you may have noticed is that I do not have iframes when I uh, open doors which would put me at a very great risk right now given I don't have a lot of HP to work with all right, I'm just gonna tap him on the back and that's another thing is that throughout the game, if my health gets too low, as you can hear right now, is that the music um, not only changes, but the tempo also uh, goes faster. Just to kind of add to that, you know, further bit of anxiety when, you know, trying to, you know, manage, you know, not only just trying to play the game, but, you know, keep the run going. Uh, so the beauty of running this on easy over normal and hard difficulty is not only do you get more of a magazine capacity in your handgun, but your health regens to full after completing each uh, stage. So yes, there'll be times I'll have to get med kits, but in between stages is where it's a you know full um, life bar each time. So what I'm doing here is what I call the uh, YOLO roll for these lasers. Normally, those lasers are completely impassable. Like, you can't, you know, you can't touch them. No matter what your life bar is, you'll die instantly. And some lasers are positioned so strategically that there's just no way to get through them. Except, in that case, where I was able to do a very precise roll, which rolls up to the laser, but not close enough to touch it. And then I turn into it almost in the next instant which lowers Jean-Luc's profile just enough um, to get by the laser without dying. And then the other method to get through is, with this help of this guard, is I'm gonna get shot through the laser while at the right distance, which will push me through the laser with iframes. Because again, normally if you touch the laser, regardless, you get killed. Uh, except that, um, that uh, shot through method is a uh, alternative uh, but also useful way of getting through whereas in this case i could do neither except just aim very carefully at the sensor through this uh, open shutter with the hole in it 
And I'm using the shotgun here to target this uh, sensor, not because of its widespread, but really any weapon other than the handgun will just give you a better angle. Um, cause you'll notice that when Jean-Luc holds the, uh, handgun when he aims it, he aims it straight forward. Whereas the, uh, SMG and shotguns, there's a bit of a angle to it. You know, more of a shoulder aim. And it may not seem noticeable at times, but when targeting objects like that sensor, it does make a difference. Alright, so... Not much going on here, just casually running through the bathroom, ignoring those two guards, blowing up that sensor. Because uh, one thing I've been tasked with, uh, per the story, other than, you know, trying to save the day and, you know, stop the bad guys, is, you know, the uh, terrorists planted five bombs throughout the office uh, complex, uh, you know, as a, as a fail-safe method should, you know, the whole takeover, you know, go bad. And so, John luke along with other, uh, teammates are trying to find these bombs throughout the facility um so so far i have found you know two bombs you know and that one in the bathroom was the second and what we're going to do here is what i in, you know call the uh, fat man room which is a mgs2 reference because it's a room rigged with explosive boxes, and I mean, they, they really went all out with uh, setting these up because, you know, if one goes off, they all go off. And normally, that would be an automatic death, depending on where you are in that room, but if you get through just in the right amount of time, you can just get through uh, unharmed, just like I did, thankfully. Over here! Oh, how nice of that guy to open up the door, because that is where we're going to be doing our next skip. Which is using the C4 I talked about. I'm going to plant one on the floor, go into cover, break out of cover, and then run in between this gap. Detonate the C4, and that squishes uh, Jean-Luc through the gap. And doing that skip right there, I think, saves at least a minute and a half of what's normally, you know, draining the water, going back out through the sewers. Um, there is some backtracking um, throughout the game. Some that's required, some that's, you know, more optional, but, you know, still kind of a, you know, horrendous task of having to, you know, you know go through these areas again. Um, so again, as part of the routing, we're only needing to go through areas that we absolutely need to. Uh, while bypassing other areas such as, you know, locating these ammo pouch um, upgrades, which increase your ammo uh, reserves for your uh, reserve weapons, such as your SMG and shotgun. Because uh, on this run, we're not going to be doing any of that because, again, the pistol's really going to suffice for, you know, the majority of the run. Alright, so I'm going to attempt to do this... Hopefully the, uh, the fast way, which I'm going to take out the uh, two shotgun guards there. Shoot that box, killing that other one. Alright, so I'm going to shoot the stagger at this guard so he moves out of the way. Do the same thing to the next one, and then hopefully I can get this door open without getting shot up too badly. So thankfully that went pretty well. Um, so there'll be moments where, yes, there's guards I have to take out, and other guards which I may choose to take out, or in that area before, I only chose to just, you know, stagger them, because for every hit that they take, as well as you as the player, there's a bit of a stun, like, stagger animation, depending on what it is. And as the player, it's absolutely annoying. Um dealing with it, but when using it against the guards, it's actually really helpful because it could change the entire tempo of going through a room of what could be a really strenuous set of gunfights over, let's say, just stunning one guard temporarily, running through and then not having to deal with anything else. Over here! Ah, thank you. Uh, it's also uh, another running inside joke with this game is uh, the guards are very vocal uh, throughout the game. 
some that kind of give you uh unintended directions other just i don't know they just yell at you anyway so i grabbed that med kit there for safety uh because there there are some parts of the game where it, it's just really high risk to go in at you know low hp unless if you're going for you know something like world record all right so we're gonna go through this room and then <gasps> what the oh that jerky locked it well, lucky for them, I intended to be locked in this room because I could just take these guys out. I don't know, I mean, they're just kind of like daydreaming or something. They're, the awareness of the guards throughout the game when it comes to their targeting behavior um, is a bit of a meme. You know, some guards, they'll shoot at you right away. Other ones are just kind of like dumbfounded that you're there. And other times they're just very forgetful if they see you. But then if you go out of sight, they just... You know, pretend like you weren't there in the first place. Um, so, we're going to be coming up to the next boss fight of the game. Uh, the first one was against Leela, and the next one is uh, is uh, Leon. Not to be mistaken with uh, Leon from Resident Evil, as it has nothing to do with this game, or Metal Gear for that matter. Even though, you know, part of the uh, marketing for this game back in you know, on the N64 was that it was supposed to be a, you know, kind of a competitor to Metal Gear. But as you can clearly see, it's, you know, not really stealth oriented. There, there's some areas where playing it um, passive can be uh, beneficial, but it's more of a, a third person cover uh, arcade shooter um, than a, you know, tactical espionage action game uh, such as Metal Gear. So, I took out that sensor in that room, which clears the way um, at this corner uh, with that laser trap. And hopefully if I do this right, I could just run right in between those guards without getting hit too badly. And I did take a little bit of a hit, but that's okay. So, what I'm picking up now is the rocket launcher. It's one of several uh, like bonus weapons that you can get throughout the game, but in this case... Um, that rocket launcher is a necessity, um, due to the current routing, which I'll explain in a minute. So, there's Leon. His weapon's a shotgun. You know, same thing as Leela. We're just gonna, you know, take turns shooting at each other, or rather just me shooting at him. Yep, and that was the uh, tragic end of Leon the Hunter. Um, and the reason we needed to deal with him in the first place was to get to that third bomb that was in that room which he was guarding. And luckily for us, uh, Jake and Lisa, who were other uh, teammates that, you know, rendezvous with Jean-Luc earlier, they were able to locate two of the other, uh, you know, of the five bombs total. Um, so there's no more uh, bomb collecting uh, from here on out. Hmm. hmm, it was a bit sus what happened there. Oh no. <gasps> oh no! Oh man, not Tom. Oh, Tom, who we only saw for a couple of screens. Gone too soon. But it was not in vain because he was trying to figure out the passcode to the elevator, which leads to the express elevator. You will be avenged, Tom. But not until later. So, in, in context of the story, the uh, scat team was um, set to seek out two targets to gain access to the control facility with that Gulf Satellite uh, super weapon. One of which is the Express Elevator, which is supposed to be a direct access to the facility, which is in this office. The other is a freight elevator, which is in a factory complex, um, but not a uh, direct access to the control room itself. And, of course, unlucky for Jean-Luc, the elevator leading to the express elevator was passcoded, but the terrorists changed the passcode before they got there. Alright, so just running through these guards while avoiding these uh, deadly lasers, which thankfully, laser uh, 
uh, defense is when they're on like a movement pattern they're you know mostly consistent you know so like if they follow a cycle they are consistent in how you can approach it oh this area looks familiar yep it was where i was here uh several stages ago and just as before i mean these guys are definitely not you know too happy to see me So this time I'm gonna actually shoot them all out instead of just only taking out just a, you know, handful of them from before. Reason being is if I were to do it the first time around, they actually keep spawning in. Um, they'll eventually like run out, but it, it just takes up way more time um, to get through there than what's needed. Oh, how nice of him to turn his back to me so I can just give him an instant, you know, karate chop. Yeah, I don't think I really even talked about the fact that there are melee attacks in the game. Um, which is, I guess, an even bigger meme than, you know, the, the guards, you know, kind of just, you know, yelling at me throughout the game. Oh, and speaking of guards, yeah, watch that one real close. He runs into that laser trap every time. And he is so legendary. Right, so legendary throughout this terrorist organization that when they remade this game for the PS2, that exact same guard does the same thing. You know, the developers did not change that guard's behavior when they remade this for the PS2, and you could roll the tape, you know, of running that mission on N64 versus PS2, and that guard will run into the laser trap each time. All right, so that was a sort of a fun, useless fun fact, but it is a fact. So now we're back down here in this basement. Okay, and this time they uh, changed the decor again. They sort of learned their lesson with the explosive boxes and instead rigged it with, you know, more laser traps and the game is sort of prompting you on, you know, where the senses are, you know, where to take them out, but we're not going to really do any of that. Instead, we're just going to take out that guard so we don't get interrupted doing another C4 skip. So same thing, get into cover, go in the gap, detonate it while I'm running into it, and I just get pushed right through, which, like the other one, it saves, you know, quite a bit of time, like, you know, at least a minute and a half to two minutes. All right, so we finally made it to the express elevator, and oh, lo and behold, it's guarded by Ryan, whose weapon of choice is the SMG and grenades, which thankfully neither pose a uh, immediate threat. We're just gonna stay put in cover and just take turns shooting at him. And just when you thought, you know, all right, job's done. We got the express elevator. We could save the day. Well, bad news is uh, when Ryan was defeated, he kind of got salty that, you know, that he lost and he took a grenade and held it up to the uh, control panel to the express elevator, blew it up along with himself so that, you know, Jean-Luc and the others can't use it. You know, of course, I mean, may maybe he doesn't understand that it's a speed run, but, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll let it slide. All right, so we're in the sewers again, and I'm gonna try to do the skip here, which is gonna be done in different parts of the run in different situations. And this particular skip is really uh, inconsistent. Oh, there you go. So that is the rocket launcher glitch. When you are in cover, and you swap your weapon to the rocket launcher while in cover and it breaks you loose. Um, for whatever reason, it allows Jean-Luc to clear through uh, gaps um, as well as some locked doors, um, which is a really helpful thing in this game because there are some doors throughout the game which need keys um, or at least you know progress to be made in order to gain access to certain doors. And with the rocket launcher, it's going to help pave the way to clear a lot of the game without actually having to go through a lot of the game itself. And 
the minor benefit is you know clearing through barricades or um certain um you know areas where you're normally blocked off you know so it's a key essential on this run again just another scripted event it's just showing the guards there and they can somehow kick and slide boxes around Alright, so what I'm gonna do here is take out this guard on the left. While carefully not taking out this guard on the right. And the reason is that if you knock out um, both of those guards there, what happens is that more spawn in behind you. And it also does a uh, scripted cutscene, which, again, loses you time. Because uh, that's another interesting thing in this game is that the guards... You know, while they can be skipped, there's also some things you could do which provide a uh, indirect benefit, whether if it's spawn manipulation, despawning, um, or in this case, just, you know, being able to, you know, use their behavior to your advantage uh, to just, you know, clear through some, uh, you know, what could be a really lengthy encounter. Uh, yes, this was on the N64, that's correct. Alright, so last three guards. I'm gonna blow up the uh, explosive box, taking out those two. I'm just gonna leave the shotgunner alone. And Sarkozian? we're done with the uh, office As section. In from oh, yeah, fun fact that uh, Gold Split sound effect is actually Jean Luc from the uh, PS2 version, which I thought I muted, but in case people are curious. <clears throat> so we're in the factory section. Normally, you gotta go through this, you know, going from one part of the facility to the other, destroying some locks, and, you know, going after one guard over another, and, you know, going in a really, you know, you know, irritating basement section. So, what we're gonna do is go through this gap here. Oh, you don't see it? Oh, there's a the gap. So, we're technically in stage... I think 16? And we're gonna go through this door, which is really stage, uh, 15 <clears throat> of what's supposed to be this boss fight with the, uh, next guy coming up and... Oh yeah, walls are optional in some areas. Okay, now we're really loading into stage, uh, 15, which is now our next boss fight, Sergeant Thunder, who uses a flamethrower. But the real threat in here is not his flamethrower, it's these two guards on these uh, gondolas here, which are more of an annoyance than really anything else, but combined with a uh, pretty hefty flamethrower, it can make for a uh, really bad experience. <laughs> Going out with a bang. <clears throat> Alright, so thankfully, but Sergeant Thunder defeated the two guards, I guess, I don't know, just gave up. You know, they despawned, so that's why you don't really take the effort to shoot them out unless you're just having a really bad day. <clears throat> Alright, so, oh, thank you for leaving the door open. So the power in that room turned off when Sergeant Thunder was defeated, and so I'm going to use that terminal to <clears throat> uh, turn that power back on. I'm just gonna take out this guard, merely for uh, setup safety. So I'm gonna go through this gap here. Oops. All right, I'm gonna do it again. Clear this box. Now, normally this stair and this door is completely inaccessible. For some reason, the devs had this barricade here as if they intended the player to, you know, find a way to destroy the box and use it as a shortcut, except that explosive box doesn't really blow up. So, thankfully, it's used for just, you know, using the rocket launcher glitch so we can gain access to this room way, way sooner. And that shot that I did against that sensor behind that barricade can only be done when you're in cover because the margin of that line of sight is so small to target the sensor. And it's important that it's done there because this makes it so that we don't have to repeat this gondola trip which is excruciatingly slow 
Um, n n casually, you'd have to do this at least three times in order to actually leave this room, but thankfully, due to speedrunning, we only need to do it once. Over there! They all keep saying over there, but then they just suddenly forget what was over there. Yeah, they're 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 very forgetful. All right, so use that key to open that door, blow up a box which was off screen but was blocking uh, the exit to the uh, next stage. And right here, I'm gonna be doing this uh, ladder grab where I'm gonna run up against this container, wedge myself in this corner, and I'm gonna basically spam my uh, action button here to try to grab this ladder. Which I did, and what that does is, for some reason, like, the interact hitbox is wider than it appears. And so when you run up against that corner, um, and just the right spot, and you aim the camera on a rather particular, um, angle range, it gives Jean-Luc just enough kind of leeway to be able to, you know, spawn that hitbox, to be able to interact with it. You know, thus giving you a uh, much quicker shortcut to reach that terminal to move that big container over. Um, so, other than that shortcut at the beginning, this is probably one of the longer stages of the factory section. Um, casually, this is probably one of the places in the game where it is very, and I mean very easy to get lost. Um, you know, there's some puzzle solving you got to do some backtracking you know guards everywhere and i can certainly speak for myself and you know vouching for the fact that yeah it is really easy to get you know mixed up in here on you know where you need to go so for now we're just going through a set of you know, puzzle solving here, which is just interacting with terminals to move some boxes down to some conveyor belts to open some more pathways. All right, I'm just gonna take that box out. So I mentioned earlier that when I open doors that I really don't have iframes. I mean, there's some cases where you do, but 90% of the time you don't have iframes, which leaves you very vulnerable when trying to, you know, interact with doors throughout this run. Thankfully, with ladders, it is not the case. You do have 100% iframes. Um, so you don't have to worry about really being in, you know, any, uh, you know, mortal danger. Alright, so I'm just gonna take that guy out next to that explosive box and then ignore the rest as, as best as I can. Uh, some other guards are rather persistent. As you can see, that one chased me from that one part of the rooftop to where I was trying to go. Um, all the ones could just be ignored while you will be routinely shot at. Um, sometimes it'll miss. Most of the times it'll hit. Or in this case, I wasn't paying attention and ran into that guy and got kicked in the face. So the purpose for going up on that rooftop was to take out a sensor which was powering a door with an electric circuit on it, um, thus preventing me from being able to leave. Uh, but with the sensor gone, we can just make our way back through this room, which, as you can see, there were, like, a handful of guards shooting at me earlier, but... Uh, part of the thing about guards in this game is, like, as you progress, um, and, or as other ones are eliminated, it can... I'm just taking them out for safety. Uh, like, as you progress, like, some guards spawn out, Sometimes guards can spawn in if you take other ones out. Um, or they just spawn out entirely when you leave a zone. Um, you know, going from one part of the stage to the next. Quick 
karate chop. Okay, that guy wasn't being very nice. <clears throat> okay. So, finished one of the longer factory stages, which conversely, we're now going to be doing one of the shorter factory stages. So, first things first, going to just take out those guards while taking out these two at this barricade, or at least try to. Squeeze to this gap. And then just make my way up and over. Oh yeah, here's a funny animation with the rocket launcher. That's a, the thing about weapons is uh, you don't really slow down no matter like what weapon you have in terms of your movement. Um, however, the rocket launcher, as helpful as it is, we can't roll with it, can't go into cover with it. Um, thankfully, with the other weapons, you can. Um, but really, the, the rocket launcher is just used for skips um, and some obstacles that need to be taken out. But... Uh, for right now, we're going to be using it here on that door after I take these two guards out. Normally, you got to go all the way around and, you know, take out this lock that's blocking this door from being open. But I'm going to use the rocket launcher to just clip through the door instead. The same thing I did earlier, uh, just before that Sunjit Thunder uh, boss fight. There we go. Yeah, it, it could be a bit finicky. Um, doing that glitch um, Like you have to be like only like so close or you know, perhaps only so far away from the door and You know and sometimes like the camera angle has to be just right All right, so I was gonna attempt to do this in one cycle, but since I uh, got shot at at the beginning I as you can see this closed off because normally if you're fast enough when the first container lifts up um, when the power's turned on um, it allows you to have the opportunity to run through in one go uh, but thankfully it's not a big deal you just lose a few seconds <clears throat> all right so this next skip is going to be doing the same glitch with the rocket launcher except it's going to be for skipping a boss fight, not trying to spawn into one like I did earlier with Sergeant Thunder. Alright, so normally you go through that door, you fight um, Duke who uses a minigun. He's also got explosives uh, throughout the room, which makes it rather difficult to try to use cover against him without him using the explosives against you. again there we go so like i said like rooms do partially load up um sometimes it loads nothing at all and you can still pass through here even though even though it just showed like a you know black square right there but you know there there was a door it just wasn't loaded and this benefit is twofold one you skip a boss fight and two no guards load up here because the game doesn't technically know that you're here yet. Because uh, again, there'd be, you know, guards everywhere in here trying to stop you from getting to this door. <sighs> okay, so this next skip is probably what I hold up to is probably one of the hardest laser skips in the game. Uh, but not the hardest skip. Um, in the run. Um, that one comes later. So I'm gonna use this spare C4 that I got earlier just to blow up that box blockade while taking out that guard. I'm gonna try my best to not get hit there, which I did, thankfully. Alright, skip that cutscene, so... 
First things first, I need to blow up a set of boxes, which is uh, part of this blockade that needs to be cleared. I'm going to use the shotgun to take out um, both of these guards if I can. And then I'm going to run up against this box to spawn the third one, but not allow them to run past me because I need them to shoot me through this laser, um, which is, well, to my right on uh, the game screen. All right, so I need to blind Jean-Luc up at just the right spot. Okay, maybe a little bit more. Okay, so I'm gonna aim off to the right. I'm gonna kneel down. Get his attention to shoot me in the back and thankfully I got it. So that's a very specific setup, um, which not only do you have to be in the right spot, but you also need to be in the right angle and um, alignment with the guard um, so that when you're shot forward, um, you will be free and clear of the laser, um, which the setup is very sensitive. Because uh, like I said, if the guard's not in the right spot or if they run past you or if for some reason the guard's knocked out then you know, they don't spawn back. Uh, it, it makes for a uh, really miserable run ending experience. Uh, but thankfully with the skip, it saves a lot of time over a, again, another very, uh, you know, aggravating, tedious process of taking out that sensor, which I just did just now, but it's way less... Uh, you know, involved with dealing with other guards. Mm. Alright, so with that sensor gone, this door is no longer electrified, so we can actually leave. Alright, so for this next one here, gonna squeeze to this gap. I mean, I know it's definitely intended. So I'm gonna keep the rocket launcher out. Uh, Cause again, for some reason the game doesn't really quite process that you're, you know, in a scripted moment with the rocket launcher. Cause normally you get put up into cover while the game is kind of showing you like all these like different, you know, fortifications. But with the rocket launcher, instead of showing Sean Luke going into cover, the game just kind of like turns them 180. Um, it's just really silly. All right, so I just only took out the one guard in a box that he was behind uh, so I can get through here into this parking garage, um, which is where the freight elevator is located. attempting to my best to not get shot at but no guarantees Over there. oh I was just about to ask where the freight elevator was and that guard answered me and he answered me again all right so with that we got the freight elevator and the next boss which is gun who uses a uh, homing rocket launcher I mean even if it looks kind of identical to the rocket launcher I have but this is definitely the uh, I guess better version which thankfully I could take advantage of that where I could just attack evade his you know sweep where he shoots from right to left each time and then you know rinse and repeat until uh yeah he's dead Sarkozian <clears throat> as in from Sarkozia all right, so with that, we're done with the factory. We're now entering the control center complex, but not the control room yet. That is going to be coming up in six stages from now, which may sound like a lot, but we're going to be skipping, you know, a lot of those stages uh, soon. All right, so normally that door gets locked um, with those guards up in that you know, control room up there, not to be mistaken with, you know, the, uh, you know, game important control room, um, which leads into the side room, which is completely fine because we're going to be using this to, okay, I thought I heard steps, but just making sure none of them are behind me. 
Alright, so normally you go up to this door right um, through this area and it's locked, but lucky for Jean-Luc, we got a nice little uh, glitch we could use to get through. Okay, well, never mind. That guy was uh, not happy. Try it again. And that skip right there probably saves like two to two and a half minutes. Um, it saves you a lot of, you know, idle waiting time and, you know, backtracking and all that stuff. So now right here is the hardest skip in the game. Uh, before I do it, I'm just going to explain it quickly and then try to do it. So what's going to happen is I get closer to this um, door, which is closed. Guards will come through. I'm going to attempt to stop one of them in place, but not kill them so that they leave the door open. And then the next part, I'll explain if, if and when I get there. Okay, so he's staying. Oh, nah. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. So the reason why I need that door to stay open is... It'll give me an opportunity to get to that elevator, which is in the middle. So I can use that to get to the end of the game. Uh, but as you can see, it's a very, very uh, frustrating skip. Um, as you gotta get the guard to stay put at the door without killing them, and sometimes they just run past it anyway. Okay, don't move, don't move, don't move. Okay, so that wasn't too bad. Now, if I was going for a PB, you know, or world record and that were to happen, it, it would have been a, a reset. But thankfully for this submission, we're just going to be doing the rest of the skips, which included going through that door that I uh, went through. Normally that gets you into stage 26, starting another boss fight. Instead, we're just going to go through this. Okay, my camera got messed up there. I'm going to go through this elevator. Yeah, sometimes the camera gets a little janky when you try to do this. Now, the important thing here is not only to get through this elevator door, but we need the interior of the elevator to load. Um, otherwise, the uh, button panel to go up won't, won't actually be there, and we'll just be, uh, you know, stuck. Okay, just equip the shotgun, go into cover. Yeah, so that's what the interior of the elevator looks like when it's not loaded, which is what I was saying. There we go. Now, I don't really understand why it does that. Um, I think it's just the game trying to catch up with what's going on. Um, so, technically, I just went from stage 25 to 30. You know, and that's where a lot of this time save comes from. Um, this run used to be over like an hour and a half. And thanks to, you know, small some moderate and very significant skips were found over the past few years um which one of them includes that um elevator skip uh because again the game doesn't quite know where you are um but it still functions where it allows you to you know get to this point in the game also just casually going through another locked door now stage 30 is the longest stage in the uh, control facility, as well as just the longest stage in the game, you know, overall. You know, even with the, uh, you know, elevator skip that, you know, got me here, there's still quite a bit of uh, groundwork I need to do uh, before I actually, uh, you know, finish this run. Alright, so I'm just gonna take out these next set of guards. Sometimes I try to go for this, uh, like, snap-to-headshot. 
um, reflex where I aim to center and then aim up quickly. Um, sometimes it works and other times I just can't seem to hit, well, really quite anything. You know, so it, there, there'll there be times where I just can see to just go for a, uh, you know, just a target scent lock, uh, you know, knockout. Yeah. Okay, so we got through that. And we're gonna go into this. Oh no. Oh no, man, look at this. Man, it's barricaded. Two sets of turrets, guards. Oh, but they got some explosive barrels back there. Man, wouldn't it be a shame if one of those were to just blow up inadvertently? Yeah, I'm actually glad that worked out. Otherwise, I would have looked really foolish just then trying to build that up and then nothing happened. Um, but you don't need to shoot it from back there. Um, there's plenty of other places where you can aim at one of those uh, barrels that are placed back there and just set off a chain reaction, but it looks so much cooler if you were to get it at the at the start. Alright, I'm just gonna grab some ammo. Go through the next checkpoint. Alright, I'm just gonna trigger this cutscene. Alright, and skip that cutscene, which is really to get this door to open. Alright, and then when I open this door, I'm going to aim at this uh, stack of barrels before they uh, push it off. Okay, I guess I was hitting uh, something else, but not the barrels, but that's okay. Um, it it's just so that they can't use that against you uh, when it when the crane moves over. Alright, take out these two um, guards, and I'm going to use the rocket launcher, not for glitching this time, but actually to fire it, which is against that turret in the back. Uh, casually, this is probably one of the worst rooms to try to clear through here without a rocket launcher because of the way they have that um, section designed. It's very, very miserable trying to deal with that, um, that turret, otherwise without the rocket launcher's help. Oh, it must have been the wind. Okay, so coming up is what was normally probably the worst part of stage 30, and I can easily vouch for how frustrating this section would be. Instead, I'm going to be doing the rocket launcher glitch here on this door, something that I found uh, myself. Um, now, the rocket launcher glitch itself was founded by other runners, but it was through this door I just was experiment uh, experimenting with it one day um, Wondering, you know, I wonder if there was a better way to get to the last stage of the game That didn't involve having to go through an array of guards laser traps a really risky laser skip and possibly putting my run at risk so instead I glitched through that door which loaded, well, part of the room I was in before. And we're technically, I don't know, somewhere between being in the game and out of bounds. Um, but as you can see on the map, I'm just using it as a rough gauge of like where I'm pointing. Because eventually I'm going to load back into what is stage 31, but I'm going to touch this door and actually load into stage Sarkozian. 31. As in, from Sarkozia? Which, welcome to stage 31, and we got two last boss fights. One, which is Commander Dan, who was the... Da, 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 he was the traitor, the one that was assassinating the other uh, SCAT team members. Thankfully, through some well-placed barrels, I'm just gonna use that against him while I trade some shots. Ugh! 
All right, normally in this cutscene, it's very uh, entertaining, let's say, on the PS2 version because uh, of this dialogue uh, where it's Commander Dan just confessing to Jean-Luc why he did what he did, uh, which is, you know, why he was the traitor. And it's because he is the half-brother of the terrorist leader. Uh, but then as he discloses that information... You know, he then says to Jean-Luc, he probably didn't know this, but I'm half Sarkozian, in which Jean-Luc replies... Sarkozian? As in, from Sarkozia? Which sounds even better on PS2, um, since there is no voice acting on the N64 version. So, now we're up against the bad guy himself, Cecil. He thinks he got one over me by, you know, being up there with all these lasers. I'm just gonna try to shoot... That sensor, use this turret, which is right there for some reason. And time is coming up right now. Ugh. So, that was uh, easy any percent um, for win back. Um, with a runtime of just a little over 55 minutes, which is a you know pretty good runtime. Um, my personal best is, you know, around like 53 minutes. Uh, world record is a uh, 49.44 uh, by Tiki Liger, uh, with Bebop Bandit in second place, just only by a few seconds. Um, and so, world record does require a lot of risk taking. Uh, some areas that you really have to do put everything on the line um, for key skips that need to work, you know, the first time, and some areas that put you in danger of dying. Um, but. You know, for this run, I'm I'm pretty happy with, um, you know, what I got to showcase, and I'm also pretty happy with that stage 30 skip, which, like I said, I only found it uh, just a few weeks ago, um, of what was a really frustrating night trying to get a run, and I, you know, put my thinking cap on and just, you know, was trying to think of, you know, if there was a better way, um, to clear through that that one last room, uh, before getting to the last stage, and Lo and behold, there was thankfully a uh, partially loaded room with an open door and a uh, access to a map, um, which allows you to just, you know, trace your way over to that room, load back in, and then here we are. So, uh, thank you for watching this submission of Winback Covert Ops on Nintendo Switch Online, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it.